Hello guys, welcome to the 10th and the final part on this Sci-Fi 3DS Max vehicle. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this series of videos and help me produce more great content for you guys. So guys, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. I really like how the model has advanced and progressed here and I pretty much think that once we figure out the wheel situation, add some details, it's going to be pretty much in a good state. So one thing to understand guys, is that I primarily work as a content designer, which means that I make things that look a certain way visually. I present it to the director or the art director, they approve it, then somebody else will take this and you know work out all the joints. So for example, to make sure all the rotations, animations, rigging work, somebody else needs to go in and you need to spend more time on that. So what I pretty much do is work out how things work visually from a concept level, and then somebody else will do all the technical details. Now before we get started guys, I want to talk about the auto back toolbar right here. And this pretty much will allow you to prevent losing information when there's an error or something else like that. So this right here is the toggle. You can turn that on or off. If it's on, you notice the timer right here. Every time this goes to zero, it will automatically back up your file. If you click this, you will reset it back to 15 minutes. If you want to change these settings, you can right click on this button. And here under preference settings, normally you have to go into customize preferences, but here it's under files. So we have backup on save, increment on save, compress on save. We have things like enable, number of backup files, how often this occurs, 15 minutes, what's the name, if you want to add your scene name to that as well. So it's not just called auto backup, but auto backup, whatever you're working on. Compress on auto backup, display countdown value. So this will help you to prevent losing any kind of work when you're working on something delicate and prone to errors and crashes. All right, so before we continue with the details, I don't think I like this tri uh, wheel design. It's not too bad here, but I don't quite like it. So I think what I'm going to do is hide this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these and I'll go ahead and apply symmetry. All right. Actually, let's do the uh, the Y axis, right? Then I'll go into mirror and I'll just kind of move this like so. All right. I think maybe I want to move the arms higher as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all this. All right. And let me just delete that. I think it makes more sense from kind of a, so this is kind of a work vehicle. I think it's a good idea to have the arms leveled with the viewing screen so the operator can see you know exactly what they're working on. And that means we can move the wheels further up here. Yeah, there we go. I think something more like that. We can also apply X symmetry and go into mirror and Shift air alt A to move that right there. All right, guys, I think I am more satisfied with this. All right, actually, one more thing I do want to try is what if I move that right here, for example? What if the wheels are right here? So I'm also thinking about balance because, you know, if the wheels were you know, right here, it would pretty much top over backwards. But with the wheels being more back here, we've got the tail providing weight in the back and then this weight in the front. So I'll need to go back in here and Alt A that again. All right. I'm thinking, okay, what if we have this kind of speedy design? All right, guys, I'm, I'm digging how that looks. But once again, um, you know, I'm not entirely sure. There's always, there's always kind of doubts as to, you know, this. See, the problem right now is that it's too far away from the ground. But if it's like that, then that will make it more even with the ground. All right, guys, we'll go, we'll go with something like that. I think, yeah, I, I think I, I approve of this. I like how it looks. All right, 
Let me just quickly symmetrify this as well. So once again, guys, I'm not spending a lot of time working out, you know, how all the joints are going to work here. I am just mostly focusing on trying to get something, you know, visually appealing and interesting looking. And I do very much like how this looks. All right. So now, guys, we need to go ahead and just load this up with some nice details. So how can we do that? Well, we can create a lot of repeating details. So what I mean by that is... If I just, I don't know, create a box right here, or I don't know, a cylinder, let's go with uh, eight, eight sides here. Now, one thing to also note, guys, is that how large this is will impact how we register the scale. So if I, if I create, let's say, a little handlebar or a little ladder rung. So in order to do that, I will just, I will just extrude and kind of activate angle snap and rotate that around and then do that once more making things simple like so all right this could be a handle for example and with these vertices selected see if i just apply symmetry right now and i use let's say the x-axis and i flip that it's this is happening but if i have something selected here and then apply symmetry it's going to apply it at that point so now it's going to be right here. All right. I will also just go into here and move that. Move that towards the middle right there. All right. So what we have done right now is we've created this little piece that we can reuse. In fact, I'm going to isolate this. Let's do a little bit more right here. So I will insert a loop there. And do this right here. And I'm just going to select the symmetry modifier. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that right back on there. There we go. And actually, I probably want to have just a rest of the vision. I want to have a loop right here to better capture that once it subdivides. And let's just let's just use uh, let's just use Turbo Smooth for now. All right. So now. And maybe I want to make it a little bit, a little bit not as wide. All right. So now, in order to mass place this, we can use this tool right here, select and place. First of all, we'll have a, a template off to the side. I always like to have something flowing off to the side that we can quickly reuse. We'll hold shift to create a copy of that. And so now, throughout the mesh, we can go ahead and use select and place. And we can left click on that, hold, and kind of, as you can see, it kind of adjusts to all the surfaces all right and then we can also rotate it on the local level and remember guys you can go ahead and set these to a hotkey for example we're going to press a for angle snap rotate that around as you can see we can now have just little ladder rungs that you see on vehicles that people will use to get around let's have this be you know zero in the in the viewport and then to at render time so we just hold down shift and just create this right here so what i mean about the scale guys is that how large these these ladder rungs are will depend will change how we perceive the vehicle for example if these are all going to be very small then we realize how large the vehicle is because if a person is this small this is a huge vehicle Whereas if it's more like this size, we can see, okay, the person's probably like this, for example, no, no, not too large. So I think this scale will work better. And so now guys, you can see how the workers can get around the vehicle to do repairs and to do their work. In that same way, I'm also going to create, let's say a, a rivet. I'll have this be a more of a larger rivet and I'm going to delete all that. Have the size set to six and I'm going to go ahead and do that right there. I'll select these edges and I'll do a small chamfer on this.
once again we'll have it be zero in the viewport and two at render time. All right, I am going to center the pivots and then I will move it a little bit lower actually. There we go. So now we have this nice little ribbon object to use as well. And now I'm going to select that and place that around as well. And I think I'll make it a little bit more defined, maybe a little bit larger than it would really be, just to kind of have it be more easily visible. And I can place that around various parts as well. We can create small little seam lines as well, or panel lines, by just having inserting loops and then just doing little bevels here. So I'm going to go ahead and mass copy this and just kind of quickly place them around as well. We can also add some cool details by uh, going in here, for example, I'm going to select all of this, select like a few edges here. All right, and I'm going to ring. I'm going to hold also this one right here. I'm going to ring. I'm going to hold control and click here to convert to polygon and then on new add a poly modifier. I am going to just inset that. And now I'm going to, or bevel that inwards. And now I'm going to detach that as a clone. I'll select that new object, give it a gray material and we apply shell on that. And that creates this nice inner detail here as well. We can also just do things such as extrude and I'll select this edge and then I will use edge constraints. get this for example so little details we can add here and there
All right, guys, and here is the finished vehicle. And of course, we're going to always spend more time adding details here and there, but I'm very satisfied with how we were able to create kind of a nice silhouette, a nice shape, and kind of a nice, sleek, aggressive, but also industrial design as well. So thank you for watching and take care.